really interesting this year. We very intentionally got, uh, when we when we went to the KDM group, who now does KDM, Husqvarna and uh, soon to be uh, Gas Gas Motorcycles, and we sort of threw an idea at them about project bikes this year, and, and we said, oh, look, can we have the same bike uh, you know, from 2019 to 2020, the Husqvarna's FB350. Reason being, it's a completely new generation bike, which got new, you know, chassis, suspension, or suspension philosophy, I guess, bodywork, uh, and quite a few mods of the engine as well. So what that did is allowed to, us to really identify the, the differences in the bike, and I guess, you know, sort of sanity check the brochure. New generation bike, so how new is it? Um, probably one of the most interesting things that we found with the bike was, you know, in spite of the fact that there was a lot of new engine components, you know, there's new cooling architecture, new radiator, uh, new rocker cover, new cam. Um, oh, what else we got in there? Um, new compression, much compression more compression right, yeah. to, to help the bike not flame out. Yep. Um, you know, one of the really interesting things is that the power curve was much, much more linear, um, smoother, less snappy. Um, you know, put it on the second, more aggressive map, and and uh, you know, you got that back again. But I, I found that really interesting, and so I talked to Rob T. Rob Twyrold here from the, is a um, technical services manager for, for the KTM group, and you know, Rob's had uh, God knows how much history, you know, with race teams and. Um, but with these with these bikes, in particular with the mapping, fuel injection has been a big thing for the best part of uh, you know ten years now on these bikes. So, Rob, just take us through that a little bit. You know why between 19, uh, sorry 2019 and 20, you know we saw, in particular in some of these smaller capacity models from both KDM and Husky, it was a much more linear map that left some people thinking, oh, it's got a bit bit of a lag, lacking a little bit or something. Yeah, yeah look. Uh, it's always a compromise. If you imagine that they're developing these bikes for so many different countries around the world, different types of fuels, and more importantly, you're really at the feedback from the test riders at the factory. So in, in a general way of thinking is smooth is fast. So if the power is very linear, then you don't get in trouble. You get power to the ground in each case and your lap time comes down. But that doesn't always compute. It doesn't always add up completely. So it leaves you with a little bit of uh, ability to change the characteristics for different riders, for different fuels, for different variations, if you have the tool. So effectively optimizing the bike's mapping for a particular market. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yes. You know, which is exactly what we've done. So. Um, you know, and I, I tried a few mates bikes, and we, we talked about that a little bit, and we've been trying to get out here and, and you know do this mapping testing for quite some time now. So, and but look, before we get into the detail, does it surprise you? I mean, I get you know some of the, the my experience today, and um, you know other times we've changed maps, even back on a 2014 FE 250 I had, the bike felt, you know, particularly with a small capacity bike, that extra snap and response, you know, um, uh, and got into meet the power so much easier. We just made it so much better to ride. Why? Why is this the, the average consumer doesn't realise that you know adjusting your mapping can make such a big difference for bugger all money. Yeah, that's an interesting um, question because why don't people do it more often? I think probably because a lot of people don't have the expertise, don't have the tools to do it, and a lot of the customers aren't aware of the difference it could make. It's not until they ride someone's bike that has had an adjustment and they go, oh wow. Oh, this you know I didn't realize it could change that much or be that much easier to ride so I think it's more about the awareness of it the fear of it because it's a bit of an unknown and and who do you trust and how do you get it developed I mean you know people sell complete ECUs with different mapping and doing very very well mm. but you still do have uh, an alternative to get your standard ECU remapped quite cheaply and really make some gains. Let's just talk a little bit about that. Let's get not get lost in tuning, you know, yeah. nerdism. Um, but, you know, there's a user setting tool. Um, you know, I remember, uh, you know, even six or eight years ago, I was like, wow, this is going to be a great opportunity. But I think the more I've come to understand it, the more I've come to understand it's a professional tuning tool. You've got to plug in a laptop. You've got to really know what you're doing. It's not just a plug and play like, an, like a, you know, what KDM has got coming uh, for the 2021 motocross no, that, bikes. That's true. The user setting tool, which was quite expensive to buy, you know, it was over $1,000 to purchase it originally. Not available anymore because originally no one really took it up because it was a very professional tool and you could get yourself in trouble. There were parameters there that could allow you to damage the motor. So it was more race teams yeah. and people that had a real interest in mapping that would take it up. But yeah, I think a lot of people have missed the boat there with the opportunity to, to grab a tool and, and do it. But there are some dealerships out there that do have them. 
as I alluded to before, the MyKTM um, app and connectivity unit, which you know, allows all sorts of things from traction control, adjustment in really intuitive terms, uh, engine braking, launch control, and uh, what have I missed there, Rob? Yeah, uh, and look, throttle response, you know, exactly. so all of those things in, in different increments, you can do it in a basic or a more advanced way. That is coming for the Enduro bikes, I understand, 2022? Hoping for 2022, yep. It looks like we'll have it for the motocross range of bikes in 21. Um, and that's going to open people's eyes to, and, and because it's uh, very intuitive and you choose the, you don't have to choose whether you're going richer or leaner, you choose the type of delivery that you want, the characteristic that you want, and the, and the tool actually decides what needs to be done to the yeah. ECU to, to achieve that. Can't wait to play with it, oh, you know, just be, muck around with dialing yeah, yeah. up and down, engine braking yeah. on a sl sliding scale of 1 to 5, uh, it's, and it look, sounds it, incredible. It's going to open people's eyes to what is achievable with this fuel injection system, how you can change the characteristics of the bike without buying exhaust systems and you know modifying cylinder heads. It, there's so much that you can change in the ECU that will suit your riding style or your riding area or your fuel yep. that's, that's going to be unlocked in the future. Look, in the meantime, uh, you still can take it, your, your, your enduro bike to the dealer, you know, whether it's a previous one or, or even a, a 2021 model. So, um, and, you know, as we said, for less than $300, you're creating a significant change. Not, it's not just getting more power and more peak power, but the way it delivers the power. And as we found out today, it's, it's, it makes a huge difference in the way, yes. in the, way the thing rides. So, um, like we said, it's a professional tool, Rob. So, if you could give us a bit of a top line insight in layman's terms, I guess, of what you've done, for instance, for the FV350, and it's not a one solution meets all bike for 2020, is it? It's a no, very that's a, true. Yeah. You, you need to have, you need to find someone that has a little experience, and you know, the real cool thing would be to ride someone's bike that's had it done and go, yeah, that suits me perfectly. But you're right, it's it's not a one size fits all. You need to look at the characteristic of the new bike, and what we have found. The smaller capacity 2020 models are a little bit lean, just off the bottom. So there tends to be a little bit of a lag on the throttle response. So basically you can richen up the mixture off that small throttle openings. We change the acceleration correction. And so the way to think about like the, that... The accelerator pump and all the exactly. car. What, yeah. So yeah. accelerator pump, depending on how fast you open the throttle, depended on how much additional fuel it squirted in. The user setting tool allows you to adjust that across different rev ranges. So you can adjust that a little bit. And, and in this case, we leaned that off a little bit. So we richened the base map and leaned the acceleration correction. Yep. You have the ability to change the ignition timing, but I honestly think the 2020 model, the ignition is right on the money. It's very hard to improve that. So today we didn't touch anything with the ignition. We just did the fueling and the acceleration correction okay. and, and you felt the difference. Yeah, and you, and you can't change anything with the traction control, that's that's set, that's not something you use the No, so change. we can't change the, the traction control intervention or the, uh, the and, and, which is very, very subtle anyway. Mm. And whatever we changed on the map in the ECU, so we're only loading changes in, we're not loading a map in. Yeah. We're loading the changes in. Between one and two, those changes uh, are equal on each, each map Yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, mate, thanks so much for taking the time to come and give us a well. Like I said, we've been talking about it for a yes, while. We I've, have. I've yes. had some experience and, and realised, you know, it yeah. makes a quantum change in the way that in, in the whole character of the, of the bike. And you know, we found that again today. We've had a few test riders out here. We're out at uh, Josh Green's property, which has got a uh, we've had a um, you know combination of bush loops with a lot yeah. of stop start stuff, which I think really sort of probably highlights the yes. differences. Uh, and also a really sketchy track where actually thinking more throttle control would be worse, but in fact. Uh, what we found was, was sort of uh, to the contrary. So, um, yeah, thanks again, Rob. It's been a really Pleasure. interesting experience, mate. I can't wait to do more of it, and especially with that new buddy, my out thing, huh? It'll be fantastic. Yeah. Thank you.